Ah, animation. A fine medium indeed. Despite being around almost as long as live action films, animation hasn't received the same recognition as live action productions, even when there have been animated works that have received critical acclaim and have won awards. One of the best things about it is the different formats that can be used, whether it be traditional animation like we're all familiar with, the most recent advent with computer animation, and who could forget good old stop motion. This is just one of the benefits of animation, and here is a few more. You can potentially do it yourself. With the advent of modern technology, you may not even require a cast or even a crew to help you with your film. In fact, it's not unusual for animated films to be made by one person, with even some animators on YouTube doing all the animation for the videos themselves. For example, if you were to make a film with no dialogue, you wouldn't need a cast at all since none of the characters would be speaking. You couldn't do this with a live action film as you'd still need actors to play the characters. Even if you do make a film with dialogue, you can keep your cast small by having voice actors do multiple parts, depending on how many parts there are. When it comes to the crew side of filmmaking, you don't require the types of crew members for an animation project like you would for a live action project. For example, you wouldn't need a gaffer or a boom operator since lighting and audio are both done in post-production. Yep, doing things in animation can save you quite a bit of money. Speaking of which, you can do things cheaper in animation. Think of any live-action film nowadays that relies on CGI, whether it be for backgrounds, characters, and even special effects. Even if this CGI blends well with the live-action, it is still animation. Because it is used for a live-action work, it must look realistic or else it would look uncanny, which makes the work even more expensive. If this were to be an animated production, looking realistic wouldn't even be an issue. In fact, not looking realistic is an asset to animation as it can take audiences to locations and meet characters we otherwise wouldn't see in a live action work. Another advantage animation has in this regard is when it comes to action and stunts, both of which can be expensive and risky in a live action production due to the choreography involved in the action scenes and the opportunities there are for someone to get hurt. Because live actors are not used for animated productions, the action scenes can be done much cheaper and pose no risk to someone getting injured in the same way doing it in a live action production would. You can work when and where you want. When working on a live action project, while you technically can get away with not filming actors together by using green screening, filming them together is easier and more practical. There's also the dilemmas of the filming location and the shooting, which may require the actors to travel if it's far away and be available when filming takes place. This applies to everyone who is required to be on location at that time, whether they are a cast member or a crew member. Since voice actors are only recording, well, their voices, they don't need to be present together, nor do they need to record at the same time, giving them the luxury of recording when and where it is ideal for them. They can even record their lines at home at an unusual time if they wanted. This isn't just limited to voice actors, as other crew members such as animators, storyboard artists, background artists, editors, and sound designers may work remotely if they have the necessary tools to do so. In fact, it's not unusual for animated productions to outsource the animation to other countries, primarily to save cost. Although people who work in animation may work separately, they still work closely together, and the extra flexibility doesn't mean they can do anything. You can do things that can't be done in real life. Think of all the things cartoon characters can do. They can shift their bodies, survive severe physical trauma, interact with the environment in an unusual way, and possess abilities that are far greater than what a real-life human being could achieve, such as super speed and super strength. Not only that, but they can be humans, they can be animals, or they can be something else entirely. 
When it comes to live action films, not only are the characters humans most of the time, but they're also restricted in only being able to do what a human can do without the use of special effects. While there isn't anything inherently wrong with this, it does create limitations on what can be done in live action, whereas in animation, the only limitation is one's imagination. Because of this, there should be a justification as to why the work is animated rather than live action, as not using any of these advantages defeats the purpose of having it be animated, but even with that said, it creates an aesthetic that can't be replicated in live action. As stated in the beginning of the video, animation comes in different forms, but just because animated works use the same method of animation doesn't mean they look alike. For example, a traditionally animated film can look like this, or this, or even this. This applies to stop motion and computer animation as well. What all these art styles have in common is that they can't be recreated in live action. However, this isn't to say that live action films can't be aesthetically pleasing, as they can and have been. The point is, with a live action work, it is restricted to the limitations of real life in terms of visuals if animation is not involved. Think about it, how could you recreate visuals like these in live action? The answer? You can't. Without animation, none of these visuals would even exist, and entertainment would be a lot different because of it. There are many different benefits to animation, and these are just a few. It's important that animation gets the recognition it deserves because it is not just for kids, it is an art form all its own, and the only limitation is one's imagination. Fortunately, as time moves on, fewer and fewer people will look down upon animation. When Walt Disney worked on Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, one of his goals was to prove that feature-length films could be animated, and considering the success the film brought and the prevalence of animation today, I'd say he succeeded.